Okay, this is the Unit 3 review sheet on functions and statistics. Number one, which relation is a function? You have to go through all of the x values, see if they repeat or not. So we have 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. These are all different, so this one is a function. If they repeat, then it is not a function. 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. This one is also a function. 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. The 2 repeats, and the 1 repeats here. 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. This one is a function. So the only one that is not a function is letter C is not a function. This question is actually worded incorrectly. It should be which relation is not a function. So please correct that. The only one that's not a function is letter C because the X repeats, the 2 repeats, and the 1 repeats. Number 2. Rashida paid a handyman X dollars per hour for a five-hour job. $25 maintenance fee as well. The total charge for the job was $175. Which equation best represents the rate per hour that the plumber was charged? Write the equation first, then start to solve for S, X. You don't actually have to solve here. You're just choosing the correct equation. So if it's 5 per hour, so 5, and you're going to use X to represent the amount of hours, then it says plus $25 maintenance fee, and it's telling us that the total was 175. So all of that is going to equal 175. The equation that matches is choice A. Number 3, the graph below illustrates the number of acres used for farming in small town New York over several years. Using a line of best fit, approximately how many acres will be used for farming in the sixth year? So first you're going to draw your line of best fit through the center of most of the points. Then you go to where the sixth year is on the graph, follow it up to where your line is, make a point there, and follow it across. According to this line of best fit, it would be where 1 is. And this is acres in hundreds. So this isn't actually 1 acre. It's 100 acres. So A is your answer for number 3. Number 4. The table below represents the total miles as a function of the number of gallons of gas that are in the tank. The question's asking, what does the rate of change actually represent? If you go through the answer choices, is it A, the cost of a Honda Civic? They're talking about gallons and miles here. They're not talking anything about costs, so get rid of that. The cost of each gallon of gas. This is representing gallons, and this is representing miles. It's not talking about the cost of the gallons, so get rid of choice B as well. The total number of miles you can travel per gallon of gas. It is talking about miles or distance and gallons. C is the best choice. D says how many miles a Honda Civic can go on a full tank of gas. C would be the best choice for this one. So D doesn't work either. Number five, which table represents a relationship that is not a function? Go through each of the choices. If the x repeats, then it is not a function. Here the one repeats, and the two repeats as well. So choice A is not a function. B is a function, because all of the x's are different. C is a function. All of the x's are different, they don't repeat. D is a function. Again, all of the x's are different. They don't repeat. A is not a function because the x repeats. The 1 and the 2 both repeat. Number 6. Kelly created two functions. Function A, y equals negative 2x plus 1. The rate of change for function A is negative 2. The number in front of the x is always the rate of change. That's the slope. Function B. The rate of change, you would use x1, y1, x2, y2. When you put it into the equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, 
to find the rate of change, it would be 7 minus 4 over 1 minus 0. The rate of change is 3 over 1. So the rate of change for function b is 3. Now read carefully through the statements to determine the answer. A, function a and function b have equal rates. This is not true because one is negative 2, the other is 3, so they're not equal. Choice B, function A and function B have negative rates. Again, untrue. Only function A is negative. Choice C, function A and B have zero rates of change. Again, this is untrue. We know that function A is negative 2, function B is 3. Choice D is the answer. Function B has a greater rate of change than function A. Function B, is 3, is greater than negative 2. Which graph represents a function? Perform the vertical line test on each answer choice. If it goes through once, it is a function. A is the choice. That's the function. It only goes through once. Choice B goes through three times. Choice three C goes through twice. And choice D also goes through twice. Number eight, which function has the least rate of change? You have to find the rate of change for each one in order to figure out which is least. For choice A, you use rise over run. Pay attention to the scale of the graph. The rise is 100 and the run is five. The rate of change for choice A is 20. For choice B, the rate of change is the number in front of the X. So the rate of change is 19. For choice C, you would use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to find the rate of change. Label x1, y1, x2, y2. Notice that I used the numbers without negatives or tried to avoid them. 1 minus negative 2 over 1 minus 0. Back to back negatives become positive the rate of change would be 3 over 1. So the rate of change for choice C is 3. Choice D, the cost of the housing house cleaning service was 40 per hour with a $30 initial fee. The rate of change is 40 an hour, so it's 40. The one with the least rate of change is choice C. The rate of change is only 3. For number nine, the graph below shows the change in water temperature of a glass of tap water over time. After you read through each choice, find the rate of change in the table. The scale is going from 25 to 20, so the rate of change is five over, the run is 10. So the rise over run is 5 over 10. If you divide 5 by 10, you will get 0.5. B would be your answer. The water temperature is decreasing at a rate of 0.5 degrees Celsius per minute. Choice A says the water temperature is increasing. Since the line is going down from left to right, it has to be decreasing. It can't be increasing. Choice C, the water temperature will reach zero degrees Celsius at 40 minutes. If you look at 40 minutes, it is not at zero degrees. It is at five degrees Celsius. And choice T, the water, temp the water was placed in a freezer at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. That's not true. It's starting at 25 degrees Celsius. B is the correct answer for number nine. Number 10, John and Mary work jobs over the summer. The equation Y equals 18 shows Mary's earnings. The table represents John's earnings. How much more does Mary make per hour than John? Mary makes $18 an hour. Use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to find John's earnings. 104 minus 52 over 8 minus 4. You'd get 52 over 4, which is equal to 
18. They're asking you how much more Mary earns. Just kidding, 13. So the rate of change for John is 13 and Mary is 18. They're asking you how much more Mary earns. So you have to subtract 18 from 13 and you'll get $5. So he's making $5 more an hour. Number 11, the table below shows the hours worked last week by employees at an insurance company. Of all the employees, they're talking about all the employees, they're talking about managers and office staff altogether. What is the approximate relative frequency of office staff who worked less than 40 hours? Less than 30 hours. The less than 30 hours column is here, and office staff that works less than 30 hours is 35. Of all the employees means you have to add up all the employees. So add up all the managers, 5 plus 15 plus 8, and you'll get 28. Add up all the office staff, 35 plus 15 plus 8, and you'll get 58. So the full total amount of employees is 86 people. Add 28 and 58. So 35 employees work less than 30 hours of the office staff out of 86 total employees. And you would get 0 0.4069 after you divide them. Move the decimal over two places. 40.7 is your answer. Choice D, 40.7%. Number 12, how does the rate of change of the graph compare to the rate of change of the function? The rate of change in the function is negative 2. The number in front of the x is the rate of change. In the graph, you would do rise over run. It's going down 2 to the right 1. So the rate of change in the graph is negative 2 over 1. The rate of change for the graph and the equation is negative 2. Go through each of the answer choices. Choice C is the correct answer. Both the graph and the equation have a rate of change of negative 2. Number 13, Benjamin, Layla, and John each deposited a set amount of money into their savings account each month. The graph below shows the total amount for Benjamin. The table shows Layla, and the equation shows John. Find the rate of change in each one. Using the information above, which statement is true? The rise over run for Ben... The rise is 600 over 1, so his rate of change is 600. In the table, x1, y1, x2, y2, 1800 minus 1400 over 2 minus 1. The rate of change is 400 over 1, so the rate of change for Layla is 400. Finally, for John, since it's in an equation, you can identify the number in front of the x. For John, it is also 400. If you read through the statements, the one that is true is A. Layla and John are saving at the same rate. They're both saving 400 each week. Number 14, which statement best describes the graph? Y equals negative 10x minus 5. It has a slope of negative 10. That means it's going down from left to right. And a y-intercept of negative 5. A is the answer for 14. Number 17, compare the different functions. Again, x1, y1, x2, y2. 16 minus 10 over 3 minus 1 equals 6 over 3, which is equal to 2. The rate of change for function 1 is 2. The rate of change for function... Three minus 1 is 2, sorry. 6 divided by 2 is 3. The rate of change for function 1 is 3 the rate of change for function 2. The value of y is 3 times the value of x. To show 3 times the value of x, you put down 3x. Increased by 6 means you're adding 6 to it. The number in front of the x is the rate of change. So the rate of change for function 2 is 3. Function 1 and function 2 are both 3. The correct statement would be C, function 2, J, 
just kidding, A, function 1 and 2 have the same rate of change. Both rates of change are 3. All right, number 18, and obviously this is not Ms. Froelich anymore. Thank you for that, Ms. Froelich. Which equation listed below is linear? Remember, an equation is nonlinear when the variable has an exponent next to it. So you're looking for the only equation where the variable does not have an exponent, and that would be C. Also, C is in the form y equals mx plus b, which we know anything in that form is a linear equation. Number 19, which phrase describes a nonlinear function? So choice A says the perimeter of a rectangle as a function of the length and width. Well, how do you find the perimeter of the rectangle? You add up all the sides. It's 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. The cost of a cell phone uh, based on data used, we did a lot of those in class where it was like the cost equals, I don't know, it was like 10 cents per, per gig plus 80 dollars. We did a lot of that in class. The cost of gasoline as a function of the gallons purchased, well the cost would equal how like three dollars per gallon. Those all look linear to me. The volume of a sphere as a function of the radius, the volume formula for a sphere is volume equals pi times radius squared times height. Well you can see that the radius has an exponent on it. Sorry about that. The volume for a sphere is 4 over 3 times pi times r to the third power. Even so, you see that the radius has an exponent attached to it, um, so that's choice D. For the test, make sure that you know the area formula for a circle. We'll give it to you, but look at it. Number 20, Mr. Wallace surveyed 75 students at Poole Middle School to find out the student's favorite place to eat. The results are shown in the table to the right. Which table shows the approximate relative frequencies of Mr. Wallace's data? Remember that relative frequency is the given number over the total number. And you can represent that as a fraction or a decimal or a percentage. All four choices are percentages. So for example, boys who eat in the cafeteria, there are 16 of them. So if I wanted to do the relative frequency, I would do 16 over 75, which equals 0.21. If I turn that into a percent, that's 21%. There's only one, uh, one of these tables has 21% in that box. So choice B is the correct choice. Uh, if that didn't work, if there were more, you would have to just test out a few of them. For boys who eat outside, 21 over 75. That equals 0.28. And then if that's still not enough, just keep testing them until you get enough where it's the only choice left. Number 21. Okay, number 21. The, the number of people with health insurance have increased since 1989. The graph shows the number of people with health insurance from 1989 to 1994. There is a problem with this graph, so we need you to change yours. Hopefully, we remember to tell you about it in class. If not, change it now. It should start at 212 million, not at the bottom. It should start at 212 million and then continue to the same point. Uh, 1994, 222. So fix that on your review sheet. I'll do it on here. So that's what the line should look like. So it's just a little difference, but it makes a big difference. And then the question asked, what was the increase in the number of people per year? Remember, whenever it says something like that, like per year or per hour, you got to think of slope. They're looking for the slope of the line, how much it's increasing per year. So we can use rise over run, and it's going up one over one, but you have to look at the scale. Every time it goes up, it's really going up 2 million. And every time it goes to the right, it's going to the right one year. So the answer is 2 million people per year. During the next three years, the amount of people increased at triple the rate of 1989. So the rate was 2 million per year. So triple that would be 6 million per year. What is the new rate of change over the next three years? Explain how you can use that number to figure out 
how many people have health insurance in 1998? Well, in 1994, we know that 222 million people have health insurance. It's going to increase to 6 million a year after that. So you can just keep adding 6 to get 95, 96, 97, 98 to get your answer. That's all you have to do for that one. Number 22, they give you a table of values. They want you to find the rate of change of a function. x1, x2, y1, y2. Use the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 5 minus 8 over 5 minus 3 equals negative 3 over 2. You can't simplify that, so just leave it as a fraction, negative 3 over 2. Find the initial value. I know in class sometimes we would work backwards on the table. This one would be really hard because it's counting by 2. So if I work backwards, I'm going to go to 1 and then to negative 1, which we don't want that. We want to go back to 0. So we're going to use the point slope formula. y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. So I'm just going to use the same x1 and y1 I used for the slope formula. y minus 8 equals negative 3 over 2, parentheses, x minus 3. We need to do the distributive property. y minus 8 equals negative 3 over 2x plus 9 over 2. In front of the parentheses was a negative 3 over 2, and inside the parentheses was a minus 3. Negative times a negative gives us that positive. Then I'm going to add 8 to both sides, and I get y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 25 over 2. So that's the initial value, 25 over 2. Okay, to so finish up part B, find the initial value of the function. When we solved it in y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1, we got 25 over 2 as the initial value. Initial value is the same thing as the y-intercept. Um, the y-intercept, though, we have to find on the y-axis. So to find 0, 25 over 2 is a little bit difficult. So I would always leave the y-intercept and get it in the simplest form possible. 25 divided by 2 is 12.5. Part C is asking you to write a function rule that represents this situation. When they're asking you to write a function rule, they're asking you to write it in y equals mx plus b, which is the equation of a line. So take your m, which is negative 3 over 2, x, and then plus 12.5 is your y-intercept. That would be the function rule based on this table. We found the rate of change, which was negative 3 over 2. We used the point-slope formula to find the y-intercept, which is 12.5, and then we put it into y equals mx plus b in order to get the function rule for this table. Number 23, the table below shows the relation between x and y. Part A is saying to explain if the relation is a function or not. To explain if it's a function or not, you should be looking at the x values. Negative 3 to negative 5. Negative 1 to 3. 0. Negative 1 to negative 1. Negative 3 to negative 3. This table is not a function because the x value repeats. So explain if it's a function or not. You're going to put down not a function. The x value repeats. The numbers, the x values actually, negative 1 and negative 3 repeat. They're assigned to two different y's.
then for part B, if the func if it is a function, create an ordered pair that would make the relation in the table not a function. In this case, this is not a function already. So there isn't another pair that would make it not a function. We can make another one. We could put 0 down and um, 2. But in this case, it's already not a function. So this doesn't really apply. Okay, the last problem about the elevators is not going to be in the video. You're going to have to do that one on your own. But the very last problem of the review sheet is this two-way table. It says 80 children went on a school trip. So of all the children, whether they're boys or girls, they all went on this school trip. So the total total is going to be 80. I'm filling in this information up here. Then it says 23 boys and 19 girls went to London. So under this London column, I could fill in the 23 boys that were attended and the 19 girls that attended. Under that, it says 14 boys went to York. So underneath the York column, I can fill in the amount of boys that went. I now have enough information to fill in all the empty spaces of the two-way table. First, I'm going to figure out the total amount of students that went to London. 23 plus 19, I'm adding them, is 42. Now I can fill in the total amount that went of boys that went to London and York. I'm going to do 23 plus 14 and get 37. To figure out how many the total amount of girls, I'm going to do 80 minus 37 and I'll get 43. I'm also going to subtract from the total amount of students the amount that went to London, which is 42. To figure out the amount that went to York, I'm going to do 80 minus 42 and I'm going to get 38 that will give me the total that went to York and to figure out the amount of girls that went to York I'm going to do 38 minus 14 and get 24 Complete the two-way table with the given information. There's lots of adding and subtracting to fill in all the missing spaces in the two-way table. Part B, find the relative frequency of all students who are boys and went to London. Show your work. Round to the nearest whole percent. So it says all students that are boys. If we're talking about the total students that are boys, the total amount of boy students is 37. So to fill in this information, all students that are boys is 37. Out of those seven, 37 boys, the amount that went to London is 23. So over went to London, I'm going to put down 23. To find the relative frequency, I'm going to do 23 divided by 37. I'm going to get 0.6216 is my answer. Move the decimal two spaces to the right. I now have 62.16, and it wants you to round it to the nearest whole percent. Underline the two. Since it's 0.1, it's going to stay, stay 62% if you're rounding to the nearest whole percent.